Hello, it's Erin from Juno Pur and Oaks, crochet pattern designer, and I am here for another crochet tutorial. This time I'll be working up this Spumoni ornament. <laughs> it's kind of a funny name, but it's based off of the uh, porch and picnic blanket that I have. Um, I'll link that pattern below. And I was trying to figure out a name for that blanket. And my friend recommended the name Spumoni because it just looked like that ice cream and that dessert. Um, so I just decided to name this the Spumoni Christmas Ornament, or another name is just like the Mesh Puff Ornament. Um, uses a mixture of the Mesh Stitch and also Puff Stitch Spumoni. Uh, to make this ornament, what you're going to need is a, a bit of worsted weight yarn. This I just used scraps that I had on, on hand of this variegated kind of Christmassy yarn. I'm not normally a fan of variegated yarn, uh, and I just wanted to give it a try. This time I will be using kind of this green color. This is just some yarn that I had uh, from Wander. It's called Wander Acrylic Yarn. It's from Furl's Crochet. I have, happen to have a bunch of like green Wander yarn that they gave me for another project, and I'm just going to be using some that I have for this ornament pattern. So Wander Acrylic Yarn. This is 100% um, acrylic. It's worsted weight yarn. And uh, the colorway is called Patina. Is this green color. It's like a light, kind of like a light uh, moss color or like, uh, what's that? Like light green color. That's Huntry's. Um, another color that I like is this meadow color. It's a more of a, more of a darker and I used that when I was doing my tutorial for the simple alpine, or the cozy alpine bobble. Okay, this time I'll just try this Pamina color, just look for a lighter, lighter green, and we'll be making up this mesh and puff stitch bobble, or this Pamoni ornament. So you'll just need a bit of this. Uh, I'm estimating like 35 yards. It's really not that much. Um, probably definitely less than 15 yards. I mean 50 yards. So um, maybe 15 grams of yarn, something like that. And I, the reason I don't know is because this is just like some random yarn that I got at a thrift store. And so I'm not sure what... <laughs> how many yards this is in it, but uh, I will link it below after I weigh this, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. All right, what we're going to also need is I use a size H hook. Size H hook, this is a five millimeter hook. This one is an Odyssey hook from Furls, and this color is emerald, and look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. They gave this to me to use for my holiday projects this year. Funny story, last year they gave me a red hook that I used for my Nordic winter afghan, uh, the corner to corner version. And um, I really wanted to use that red hook again this year and I just could not find it anywhere. I knew I had taken outside when I was crocheting with my kids. I could not find it anywhere. Last night I found it while I was wrestling my kid out in the yard and here's what it looks like. Look, look what happened to my poor little hook. Oh, my baby. I don't even know. I don't even know. My guess is this got ran over by the lawnmower in the grass. Actually, we were playing Pokemon with my kid during a Pokemon battle. And he was like, oh, look at this, Mama Bullet. I was like, no, I know exactly what this shiny red is. And then uh, a little bit, a few minutes later, he was like, look, mom, it's the rest of your hook. So uh, anyway, it's a pretty durable hook, but it just got ran over by the lawnmower, unfortunately. Anyway, so Furls was kind enough to uh, let me try out this emerald one. I just love uh, the, how this hook feels in my hands. I could crochet all day and it doesn't get cramped. <laughs> so that's awesome. Okay, but anyway, back to it. Um, you'll need worst weight yarn, you'll need a size H hook. A note on that size H hook is that um, 
I might crochet a bit tight. This pattern doesn't really have a gauge. What you do if uh, your pattern is not the same size is you, um, you know, tighten your tension or loosen your tension. You can go down a hook size or you can get a different bobble or you can take it out and try again. Um, so the bobble that I used is a 2.56 inch bobble and uh, that's the diameter here. So 2.56 inches. Look at this, isn't this cute? I got that from Green Fox Farms. She's one of my crochet friends and it's just like a little notions box. This is where I keep this uh, tape measure. So the circumference doesn't say on my box, but the circumference is eight and a half inches or like 21 and a half centimeters. I know that some ornaments are labeled by circumference, but this one is by a diameter and it's 2.56 inches or about six and a half centimeters. So that's the bo bobbles that I'm using. Um, there'll be the inserts for here. Think of these ornaments kind of like amigurumi, but instead of stuffing it with uh, polyfill or stuffing like that, um, we're gonna be using a bobble. And you can get these clear plastic bobbles like at your local craft store. I got these at Hobby Lobby. Joanne's probably has some and Michael's as well, or just wherever. I'm sure uh, you can just use some bobbles that you already have in your Christmas decorations. Um, and then just cover them up. They don't have to be clear. They can be whatever you want. Dollar Store probably has some. Let's get started making this Maloney ornament. What we're going to do first is with our length of worsted weight yarn, we are going to make a magic circle. If you don't know how to make a magic circle, I do have a YouTube tutorial. Or you can just kind of watch as I go slow motion with this one. Make a magic circle, and then we're going to do 10 single crochets in that magic circle. We're using US terms. Two, three. You can find the written instruction for this pattern, uh, link down below. And if uh, you want to join in the crochet along that I'm running with High Desert Yarn, that will also be linked. And we are making 10 Christmas ornaments together. Um, so we have some beautiful crochet decorations just in time for Christmas. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, that last one, I did not pull into the circle. Nine. And I'm going to pull that tight. So 10 single crochets in the magic circle. And then I'm going to slip stitch to that first um, single crochet to join. Do, do, do. If you've watched my videos before, you just know that I kind of hum and do, do, do through my projects. Okay, now we're ready for round two. We're going to chain. And for this ornament, we are going to turn. So we chain one, we turn. Now we do a single crochet chain one in each stitch around. So in this first stitch right here, we're going to single crochet chain one, single crochet in the next stitch and chain one. In the next stitch we single crochet and chain one. The next we single crochet, chain one all the way around. 
we will end with 10 single crochets in our round and 11 chain ones because remember we started with the chain one and we're also going to end with a chain one. Yeah, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to slip stitch to that first stitch to join. Okay, I have a very similar, um, another bobble pattern that's close to this using the mosh, moss stitch. So the moss stitch and the mesh stitch are very similar, but there's a difference. Um, each one has single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. The moss stitch, you do your single crochet in the chain one space below, and then you do a chain one over the single crochet. But the mess, mesh stitch, which we're doing right now, mesh, is we're doing single crochet, chain one, single crochet. But this time, the... Um, single crochet stitches are worked in the single crochet stitches and then there's a chain one and then the single crochet is worked in the single crochet. Does that make sense? So each of our single crochets are going to be worked in the single crochet stitch. I don't know which way I'm going here. Okay. If you ever lose your spot you can just you know frog back a little bit and try to find it. Okay, so we are ready for round three. We're going to chain one and turn. Now, in one stitch, in the first stitch, we're going to do um, I'm going to do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then in the next stitch sorry single crochet chain one single crochet chain one and then in the next stitch we are going to single crochet chain one okay next one we do single crochet chain one and then a second single crochet in that same stitch, chain one. And the next stitch, you know that it's uh, the single crochet stitch because you have, you can see that right there. Bring this a little bit closer. I feel like my covering's a little bit off. I think that's better. Okay, then in the next stitch we do single crochet, chain one. Here we're doing an e increase every other stitch, so let me pull my yarn, it's kind of wrapped around in a funny way. Okay, so we do Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and then in the next stitch, just a single crochet, chain one. After each single crochet, we do a chain one. Let's do that again. In this next stitch, we do single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and then the next single crochet, chain one. Next stitch, do that twice, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. And then we do another single crochet, chain one. We should end up with 15 single crochets. One, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's see here. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we were right, fifteen single crochets. And now we slip stitch here through the beginning to join. And we're going to chain one and turn. And now we're already done increasing. So what we do now is very similar to what we've been doing. Okay, In every single crochet, we do a single crochet and chain one. And we skip the chain one space and you work a single crochet and a chain one. And single crochet and chain one. And a single crochet, chain one. I've been blurry this whole time. Single crochet, chain one. Single crochet, chain one. Single crochet, chain one. Single crochet, chain one. We do that all the way around. because we're not doing any increases or decreases. Every stitch should have single crochet in it. We should have 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. Yeah, it was just fourteen. Do, do, do. Okay. Now we're gonna chain one. And turn. Now for rounds five and six, we're just going to repeat that. We do the same thing for round five and six as we did in four, where every single crochet for the single crochet. And there's a chain one in between. And this kind of creates the little mesh. If you've never worked the mesh stitch before, and you would like to just practice on something that's not in the round, and um, we're not doing increasings and decreasings, I do have a simple mesh um, coaster that you can try out, and that's free on my blog as well. Um, and I do have a YouTube tutorial for that, I believe. Um, here's a not in my yarn. Two, 
I don't know if I'm counting right. Maybe this green color is kind of hard to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One more. And you just gotta fight it. Fifteen. Chain one. Slip stitch to join. Okay. Round six is just the same where we chain one and we turn and we work single crochet and each single crochet around, making sure we have a chain one in the middle. Don't really have a whole lot to say. Took my kids to the pediatrician today, and so my brain is just kind of blah because that is just an event. That is just an event. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14. I'm going to do the last one in this jumble right here. Chain one. Slip stitch here. And now, my friends, this is where things start to get fun because we get to add the, uh, the moss. No, nope, we did the moss stitch. We get to add the puffs here. So round seven is where we get to do the puffs, and I'll teach you how to do that. I'm gonna chain three, and then turn. So if you've never worked a puff stitch, I do have a tutorial for that, but I'll walk you through it uh, right now. To do the puff stitch, we are gonna do a nine loop puff stitch. And so what it's like is like working a bunch of um, partial double crochet clusters. Uh, we're not going to, you know, complete each double crochet, but we're going to uh, have nine loops on our hook before we complete the whole thing. Okay, maybe that's complicated, but I'll walk you through it. It's called the puff stitch. There's a few different um, sizes that you can do, but we're going to do one that has nine loops on it. And we're going to do each puff in the chain one space. Okay. So, we, here's the first chain space, right? So we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into the chain one space, yarn over and pull the loop. Okay, so we have three loops on our hook. We yarn over and insert the same stitch in there. Yarn over and pull through the loop. Now we should have five. We're going to yarn over, insert hook in the same, yarn over, da, da, da. Uh, now you should have seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to yarn over one more time, insert our hook into that same space, yarn over. And now we have nine loops on our hook. And we're going to yarn over and pull through all nine of those loops and then chain one. So that is the puff. Now in the next puff stitch, or in the next chain one stitch, we're gonna do another puff. So we yarned over, I'll walk you again through that slow, okay? Yarn over, 
insert your hook through the chain one space, yarn over, pull through, you have three loops. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, five, yarn over, insert, pull through, seven, nine. So then we yarn over, pull through all, I don't know if I like yarning under like this. Two. Pulling through all of them kind of helps. And then we do a chain one. Okay. We yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, insert, do, do, do. See how it just kind of goes. Kind of do a little dance. Cute. Like it? In every chain one space, we're going to do that. We're going to do a puff stitch in every Do that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I did that wrong. Forgive me. Let's pull that one back and do it again. I think I was trying to do a um, cluster stitch. Cluster stitch is fun too. It's just not the puff stitch, not what we're doing. Okay. If you notice, we insert our hook four different times. One, two, three, four. That's just another, oop. Just another way to look at it. Sometimes I forget, but I was able to do, like if I, yarn under right here, I think this might make a difference. And then this last one where you yarn over, and pull through all the loops. Sometimes you just have to work your way through it, I guess. <laughs> this yarn is a little, splits a little bit. I feel like when I made my porch and picnic blanket, it really helped to do that yarn under thing. Not too much right now. So I'm just going to finish these up and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, we are ready for the last puff stitch. There should be 15 puff stitches if we do this correctly. Yarn over, pull through all of them, and then you finish with that chain one. Then do a chain one and slip stitch to the top of that chain three. There we go. Actually, because of the way this pattern is, since we already do a chain one right here, we're not gonna chain one again. We're just going to slip stitch. Here I like to perform a fit check. So I'm just going to make sure that this isn't too big or too small. Looks like it'll be okay. It might stretch a bit. So you know, I can always stretch around there a little bit more. So um, 
think here in my sample I had uh, removed a row, so this one was kind of too big on there. And here we removed a row, so that's how we do that. So now we're ready to start round eight. Okay, round seven was this puff stitch round. Now we're ready for round eight. Round eight, uh, we're going to do some more uh, mesh stitch. We're going to chain one and turn our work. Each, uh, each single crochet we're going to do is going to be on top of the puff stitch. So you single crochet on top of the puff stitch and chain one. And we're going to skip this space and we're going to single crochet on top of the puff stitch, chain one. Single crochet on top of the puff stitch, chain one. We're going to do that all the way around. One more, single crochet, chain one, oops, hit my camera, and then we're going to single crochet here, slip stitch, no, we're going to single crochet, we're going to slip stitch to join. Where you see my camera keeps cutting in and out because my kid woke up early from his nap because he's three and he doesn't think he needs to nap anymore. So I've been trying to help him find something to do. Okay, for round seven, I'm going to, oh, sorry, for round nine, I'm going to repeat uh, round four, which is just uh, we're going to chain one and turn and in each single crochet stitch we do a single crochet and we chain one single crochet chain one single crochet chain one single crochet chain one, crochet, chain one. all the way around try to work fast because my little guy is probably going to come out and say, Mom, I need you out. Three. I think three is just such a lovely age where you like think you're independent and like a big kid, but also you're three and you need mom's help with everything. So, so fun adventures I have around the house. My one-year-old is sleeping. Hopefully she stays asleep. And my six-year-old is at school. And then he's going to go home with a friend. So I thought I would do some good crochet time today. So here we are at the end. Chain one. Here we go. Round uh, 10, again, we're going to do the mesh, the mesh stitch, I can never say that right, the mesh stitch, where uh, we're just repeating what we did in round 9 or round 4, where every single crochet stitch has a single crochet stitch in it, and the chain one in between. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, 
single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. One single crochet, chain one single crochet, chain one single crochet, chain one single crochet, chain one and slip stitch. And then next comes round 11 and we are going to repeat our puff stitch round. We're going to do a repeat of round seven. And that's chain three and turn. And we're going to make these puffs again. Okay. So to do the puffs in every chain one space, we make the puff stitch. In case you forgot in the last few rounds, I'm going to just show you how to do it here again. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook through that chain one space. We're going to pull up a loop. So now we have three loops here. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop. We should have five, seven. We're going to go one last time, a fourth time. And we should have nine loops on our hook. And we're yarn over and we're going to pull through each one of those loops. Yarn over, pull through that last loop. Okay, so like a, a chain one basically. Okay, then we're going to skip that single crochet and we're going to go right into pop stitch. I think I started that one wrong. Once again, I was making a cluster stitch. I have a couple patterns that use the cluster stitch. So sometimes I get a little bit confused, but this is a puff. In the puff, we just yarn over, insert our hook, pull the loop. Yarn over, insert our hook, pull the loop. Yarn over, insert our hook. Pull up a loop and once again yarn over to our hook. Pull up a loop. We're going to do that in every chain one space all the way around our bobble. Chain one. I'll meet you at the end. So after your last puff stitch, you should have 15 puffs. And then you're going to slip stitch to the top of that chain three to join. Oops, once again, I moved my thing. Now is a good time to insert your bobble. Isn't that cute? It's gonna be so cute. And uh, now we'll insert our bobble after we do round 12. Because round 12, we're just going to do a repeat of round eight. Chain one and turn. I don't necessarily want to work around my bobble. So I'm going to decrease that, <laughs> decrease our um, number of rounds we work on our bubble. So round eight, chain one, and we do a single crochet on top of that bobble, on top of that puff, chain one. Top of this puff, single crochet, chain one, 
top of that buff, single crochet, chain one, and your is acting funny. And just single crochet on top of all of those puff stitches with the chain one in between. And our next round is where we're going to start our decreases. Chain one, and now we're going to slip stitch to start here. Now I'm going to increase insert my bobble. First, I'm going to make sure that my end is kind of tucked in there from when we made our magic circle. So that tucked in, so I don't have to weave in that end. Pull the bobble cover inside like so. For round 13 we're going to repeat our mesh stitch again. Um, we're not decreasing quite yet. Uh, I'm going to start that in round 14. So right now we're going to do a, a repeat of round 4 which is our mesh stitch round where in every single crochet stitch we do a single crochet and then we chain one and then in the next single crochet do a single crochet and chain one. We skip over that chain one space and in every single crochet we do a single crochet. We're going to do that all the way around until we get to the end. In our last one, chain one, and we're going to slip stitch to that first stitch to join, chain one, and turn. Now we're ready for round 14 and we're going to do a decrease uh, row. So we chained one and we turned. For this first single crochet, we're going to do our regular single crochet, chain one, and now on the next two single crochets, we're going to decrease. We're going to do a single crochet decrease. So you insert your hook into the single crochet, pull up a loop, but before you finish that single crochet, you're going to find, you're going to reach over and find your next single crochet stitch. Go through, pull up a loop. Now you have those three loops on your hook. You yarn over and pull through those three. Okay? And then we're going to chain one. And we're going to repeat that. So the next, we're getting tighter, so you kind of have to reach a little bit more, but you're going to skip that chain one space. In the next single crochet, do a single crochet stitch in chain one. Then you're going to do your decrease. So in the next single crochet, you're going to start it, and then find your next single crochet and finish it. Decrease, chain one. So that makes sense. We're going to do that all the way around and we're going to decrease our count by, um, we're going to get, go to 10 single crochets and, and 11 chain ones. Okay, 
So single crochet, chain one, then we're going to do a decrease. Insert our hook, pull up a loop, find our next single crochet, insert, pull up a loop, pull through all loops. Chain one. Just a single crochet, chain one, and then a decrease across the next two stitches. Chain one. Getting tighter here, so it's a little awkward to work around the bobble, bobble work around your ornament, but this is gonna just look so nice once we get it done. And then we're gonna do one more, I believe. Do. -do, -do. Decrease. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and ten. So I think that's all. It's just it's just tighter, so it looks a little funky. Okay, pull through. For round 15, this is our last round, we are going to work a single crochet in every stitch around. Every single crochet stitch around. And so essentially we're kind of decreasing our chain one spaces. So just in every decrease stitch in single crochet, we're going to work a single crochet. And we are not going to do a chain one. This way, it'll just be a nice easy way to seam, uh, kind of enclose our bobble, making a little bit tighter, a little bit neater at the top. So you should end up with 10 single crochet stitches and no chain ones besides the first chain that we started with at the beginning of the round. Now we're going to slip stitch, final slip stitch join. Then I'm going to fast uh, cut kind of a long tail here, fasten off like so. Next. Uh, insert your yarn through your yarn needle and we're going to weave in and out these stitches here really I'm, I like to do like a whip stitch around around each stitch Okay, uh, so once you get to the end, you just cinch, cinch it shut. If you find that maybe you have too much yarn up here, it just looks kind of bunchy bulky on top, you can kind of just like readjust a little bit to where it fits, or you can remove like round 13 and don't do like a repeat mesh stitch round um, and just start decreasing already round 13. Uh, it's up to you. 
Okay, I pulled that tight. And I'm just gonna secure with a little knot here. I'm not too worried about these bobbles coming undone. This is not like amigurumi where my kids will be like playing with stuffed animals or garment or whatever that just requires really intense knotting so that it doesn't come apart. Um, so I'm just gonna knot that once and then I'm just gonna weave in my end like that. Just kind of hide it inside, snip, and then we call that good. So that is the Spumoni ornament. And uh, remember, if you want to know why it's called Spumoni, you can click the link down below uh, for the fortune picnic blanket and see for yourself what the Spumoni looks like. Um, isn't that just pretty? And there it is again with the variegated Notice here I have extra stitches, so there's more puffs here. Um, this was kind of more of a test, and here is the real deal. Uh, we are running a crochet along, so if you do not know that you're, if you're not a part of it, uh, you should, can join now. And if you're joining after Christmas 2022, you can still hop aboard because all these patterns will be free on blogs. Uh, it's between myself, Erin of Juniper and Oaks, and Joanna of High Desert Yarn. There'll be 10 bobble ornaments similar to this. Here are some of the other ones that are included. Um, and the event is run over the two weeks after American Thanksgiving. And there will be Monday through Friday, there will be a new free pattern on the blog or you can purchase a bundle of all the patterns together. So one day at a time, there'll be a brand new pattern or you can just purchase the bundle right away. Hope that makes sense. And I hope that you love these Christmas ornaments. We have uh, tried really hard to make some ornaments that you guys will love to put on your tree or give us gifts. And I can't wait to see yours. So go ahead and click the link down below for that event. Okay. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and then you can click the bell to remind it of whenever I release brand new yarn related content. I post crochet tutorials like this one for patterns, also stitch tutorials. I do interviews with other crocheters, talk about whatever events or fun yarn related content that I have coming out. And I also do unboxing videos. So, uh, just click that little bell down below so you get those notifications of when I release my new videos. Please leave a comment below of how you liked this pattern. What color did you use? And what other ornaments have you made for this cow? Let me know.